afternoon all. Well, it's a nice sunny day today. So I'm looking at the solar MPPT project and I'm also looking at the Arduino solar PWM project. Now at the moment these two projects are focused on achieving different things. The MPPT is aimed at trying to maximise power coming from the solar panel and shove it into the battery, whereas the PWM project is aimed at holding the battery voltage constant. Now eventually of course the uh, voltage maintenance algorithm that's in the PWM unit needs to be incorporated into the MPPT because it, for this to be a charge controller it needs to be able to control charging of the battery not let the voltage go too high. So for example at the moment I've got the PWM set quite low the battery voltage is 13.69 but if I increase the PWM control and maximize power to the battery I can actually get the voltage to shoot up far too high there it is over 15 volts so I'll back that back off so is it going to be a relatively easy task to take the algorithm that's in the PWM unit and incorporate it into the MPPT well I'm not so sure now if I'm playing with the MPPT unit and I've got the pulse width set fairly high and I notice that the battery voltage is climbing too high then my natural reaction is just to back this back down to a lower PWM percentage to try and pull the battery voltage back within a reasonable range of voltage to get it back to what is a more normal float voltage. But I'm actually now considering implementing this in a slightly counterintuitive way. What I'm planning to do is if I'm at, say, a maximum power point of 70% PWM and I notice that the battery voltage has climbed to a point where it's above float, I've disconnected it for the moment so that that doesn't happen, I'm thinking of actually taking it further up in terms of PWM. Now that will slightly reduce the amount of power because we'll no longer be at the maximum power point, but 100% PWM, in other words a direct connection between solar panel and battery, may not be enough to bring the battery voltage down from its unusual high. So what I'm planning to do then is to completely change the frequency of the pulses going to the MOSFET. Now in order to make the buck converter work as a buck converter, the frequency needs to be around 15 kilohertz. But the PWM unit pulse width modulates at around 500 hertz. So what I'm planning to do is take this up to 100%, change the frequency of PWM from the high frequency where this works as a buck converter to a low frequency where the inductor would do virtually nothing and then start to back this down in terms of percentage but at this much lower frequency, mimicking pretty much the way that this one works. So this will create an inflection point around the 100% PWM point now think about this if the battery is discharged and we're at 0% PWM and this is from the point of view of maintaining battery voltage. PWM will work in the range 0% all the way up to 100% at 500 Hz. Now if having climbed up to 100% we're still not getting uh, maximum power or, or at least the battery still hasn't reached its float voltage, we can then go further as it were the percentage starts to come back down again but at a different frequency, 15 kilohertz. So it extends the range. The percentage of PWM is uh, inverted, it's made mirror image, but the frequency is changed and this gives an extended range of power into the battery from the solar panel. Nought to 100% um, is a direct connection. But then go further and we get the power maximization benefit from the buck converter with its inductor. Now the reason I think this is going to help is that this unit here is very primitive. All it does is it winds the PWM value from 0 to 100% and just watches the battery voltage and tries to get the battery voltage to sit at the target of 13.5 volts. Well that will be done within this section here, the 0 to 100% PWM 
at 500 hertz. Only if taking it to 100% doesn't take the battery to float voltage to 13.5 volts, it's still below that, will it then switch into MPPT mode and wind the percentage back down, but I'll treat it as actually extending it beyond the 100% point at the 15 kilohertz frequency. Now if that sounds overly complicated, it really isn't because this unit requires a further mode, which is night mode. I want the MPPT unit to be able to detect when there's nothing coming from the solar panel. And that's relatively easy to do because we're measuring voltage at the solar panel end, we're measuring current at the solar panel end, separate to voltage and current at the battery end. So it can fairly easily work out that it's night time because there'll simply be nothing up this end of the unit. Now the purpose of night mode is to put the Arduino into a very low power, uh, low current mode. So various things we can do here, including slowing down the Arduino's clock. Uh, one other thing, this decoy driver here with its two LEDs, one of those is on at any one time and that's going to be consuming about 10 milliamps. Well if this thing has a night mode and it detects that it's in it, you can actually switch both these LEDs off by taking the digital output that's driving them to a tri-state mode or basically an input and then neither of these two LEDs will be on. And if I want to take this night mode to its extreme, I could actually sleep the CPU, put it to sleep and then every 30 seconds or so it could just wake up, check whether there's any voltage and current coming in from the solar panel, realize that it's still night and go back to sleep again and keep doing that until it's clearly dawn where there is some power coming in on the solar panel side. Now in high frequency MPPT mode, 70% is about the maximum power point, but that's for a 36 cell solar panel. Now when I did some experiments with 72 cells, maximum power was at a much lower percentage, sort of out here at about 40%. And it is possible that I could make this unit compatible with up to 108 cells, so that's three standard 36 cell panels in series. And then this PWM point for maximum power will probably be even further out to the right. I mean, it could be as low as 25% PWM. So you have quite a wide range here, 0% to 100% at low frequency for holding the battery voltage constant, and then 100% back down to possibly as low as 25% for maximizing power at the 15 kilohertz frequency. So I'm pretty sold on this dual range idea where PWM goes all the way from naught to 100% at the lower frequency. And that means I can port the simple code from this into the MPPT unit and make it work within this range. Then you flip into this higher frequency mode and take the percentage back down 70% for maximizing 36 cell panels and beyond that for maximizing panels with a large number of cells. And I've also added onto this drawing night mode down here. Now what does the Arduino PWM charge controller do at night? And in fact it's the same as the PWM5. Well it's actually pretty dumb. It's sitting there thinking the battery is below float voltage wind the PWM up. So it sits there all night long with this thing at 100% PWM trying to force power from the solar panel that's on the yellow side through to the battery and nothing happens of course because there is no solar panel, there's no solar power at night. So that's just some thoughts there on how to bring the battery voltage maintenance code that's in the PWM and incorporate it into the MPPT. And I did actually think at one point I might harmonize the code base for these two units make them run identical copies of the code and have this one just a detector that has other hardware and therefore invoke the MPPT functionality. But I think that might be taking things perhaps a little bit too far.